Hello there. I'm Ken from Wally World Gallery in Ormond Beach, Florida. Today I want to discuss with you a little bit of different choices you have when it comes to glass. I'd like to start off with saying what needs glass. Uh, a lot of times I've heard photographers say that this does not need glass, but there's a list of things that you can't do. You can't expose it to light, you can't expose it to moisture, you can't wipe it down, you can't clean it. So in my mind that means it needs glass. Technically it may not need glass, but if you want to hang it on the wall and enjoy it and not worry about it being damaged over time, then it needs glass. So if you have a piece of art that's in harm's way and it can't be cleaned easily, it needs glass. That's the bottom line there. Uh, we have a sample setup of a couple of different choices available. We have the regular clear glass, our UV protecting glass, the museum glass, or the non-glare glass. There's other choices amongst all of this as well, but we'll go through that quickly. Uh, the regular clear glass we barely use. Uh, this is the standard green glass that you see on Coke bottles and whatnots. This is just glass. It doesn't offer much protection from UV light. The UV light, the UV glass is what we use on just about everything in the store. It offers the highest level of UV protection without adding too much to the cost. It looks like regular glass and it has a film on the inside of the glass so you clean it like normal glass. Hi there, Ken from Wally World again. In my last video, I tried to explain the differences in glasses and I made reference to regular glass being green and I wanted to clarify that a little bit as to what I mean by that. So I've, gotten, I've got two pieces of glass here. The first is a piece of clear glass and I'm gonna try my best to hold it up to the camera. Hopefully you can see the edge of that glass is green. And that's just regular glass. The UV protecting glass, if you can see, is brown. And the UV light goes into the red spectrum a little bit. So this filters out that red light so that it uh, keeps your art safe. Hopefully that clarifies why I said grass, uh, glass rather is green. Uh, it does have a slight green tint to it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. It doesn't you know, worry about scratching or anything. Uh, the museum glass, uh, this has many different names in life. Uh, some of the local big box stores call it masterpiece glass. Uh, other places uh, have all kinds of different names for it, but this is a special glass that's nearly invisible when it comes to um, reflection and glare. As you can see, there is a piece of glass here. I'll tilt it around, catch the light in different ways. Uh, so you can see that it is the, the least reflective of all of them. And the non-glare glass. We do have non-glare glass available with a UV film. It costs almost the same as the museum glass, so we offer that instead usually. The non-glare glass is a more old fashioned way of doing a frosted glass to keep the glare uh, from bothering you. It doesn't allow you to see the art any better and it doesn't protect the art in any way. It just allows you to sit in the living room and not have the glare from the window pane reflecting off the picture bothering you while you're watching TV. That's, that's pretty much the sole purpose of this class. Uh, I'm going to show a little demonstration to, to show off the UV protection. Uh, any of you who grew up in the 70s, 80s, early 90s knows this is a black light and it's going to allow things to fluoresce. And as you can see, the mat turns quite purple on the regular glass. It offers almost no protection from ultraviolet light. I know this is uh, ultraviolet. Infrared is uh, the damaging light, but uh, this, this gives a good visualization of what light's getting through. Uh, if you go to the UV glass, you can see very little, if any, goes through and reflects off that mat. Uh, the museum, uh, a small amount gets through. Uh, it's not the highest level of UV protection, but it is the, uh, it offers 92% UV protection while giving you the best clarity possible. So that's important. And the non-glare glass offers very little to none as well. Uh, so why is UV light protection important? Well, UV light is what does the most damage to art. Uh, a lot of times you'll see a picture on the wall where the matting doesn't match anymore. It's a very blue piece of art. And that's because the light has damaged that piece of art down to the blue layer. Uh, when prints are made, there's going to be a very basic 
generalization. Usually they start with the color yellow on the paper, then they go into the blues, the reds, the browns, the blacks, things of that nature. So by the time a piece of art has turned blue, that means the blacks, the browns, and the reds have all faded out of it. And the only thing left is blue. So uh, the UV protecting glass will help stop that. In our industry, there's a lot of discussion about acid-free. Well, most of us switched to acid-free materials 30 years ago. Acid-free, if you're going to a professional, is just not a thing anymore. It's just, it's just standard that happens. The ultraviolet light protecting glass, if you ask me, is the most important thing you can do for your art right now. If you have a piece of art in your house that you think is important to you, you're going to want to make sure it has UV glass on it. Bring it to a custom framer, let them uh, check it for you. Uh, it might say on the back, a lot of uh, these glass companies offer stickers. We put the sticker on the back that says your art's protected with 99% UV blocking abilities. Uh, so that might be your case. Uh, after doing this for many years, I can just look at it and tell you that's UV glass or not. And there's just a subtle difference to it. Uh, so UV glass is, is critically important when it comes to protecting art, uh, your photographs, things of that nature. Anything that's irreplaceable must have UV protecting glass on it. Uh, now, saying that, the glass uh, will make condensation. Uh, so you don't want any glass right up against your artwork, whether it's a needlework, a photograph, uh, anything, a, a fine art print, because that glass is gonna make condensation, get moisture in there, cause mold, cause damage to your art. Uh, if you're in that situation where you don't have room for a little piece of matting or glass spacer to hold it off the art, you can put plexiglass in there. We have plexiglass available. It's, it, it almost looks identical to regular glass. It's lighter weight, it's a little more expensive being a petroleum product, of course right now, it might get cheaper, who knows. But the plexiglass won't stick to the art, won't cause damage to the art if it's in direct contact with it because it doesn't make condensation. It doesn't get cold or hot compared to the rest of the art. So if you have a small photo frame sitting on your table and the pictures are all sticking to it, it's probably too late, they've stuck. But if you want to avoid that in the future, uh, come into a frame shop, uh, get some little pieces of plexiglass to put in there. We can do UV protecting plexiglass. That'll keep it all nice and safe and you can enjoy them without any troubles. Uh, the exception to that is pastel art. We don't put plexiglass on pastel art. Pastels uh, are very vulnerable to static electricity and, and that, that pull of the dust onto the plexiglass would be fatal to a pastel. There is special plexiglass available for pastels, but it is exceedingly expensive. It's available. If you need it, we can get it, but I would just recommend glass. Uh, so that's the basics of glass. I hope if you have any questions, please leave them below. I'd be glad to go through them with you. Uh, and now uh, we'll see you again next time. Thanks for tuning in.